Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be putting together a power delivery unit for our 10 inch server rack. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I do wanna thank all the people who commented and suggested how to do this power delivery unit and suggested to use a surge protector, which is such a genius idea because I, was, I couldn't find any UPS for this guy and I needed to find some way of power delivering so a uh, surge protector would work perfectly now this is definitely over engineering like I, I could just slap this in here or run the cord and I'll be done with it and let this like float around but uh, what we're going to be doing today is taking this little surge protector that I found on Amazon which is about nine and a half inch wide it's got five plugs in and three USB ports delivering 2.4 amps total not individual ports so that's the only downside it's got a four and a half feet cable or about five feet. I never really measured, but that's what they said. And what we're gonna do is actually install it onto this little face plate. So this face plate is something that I designed uh, on my last video. And what I'm planning to do is install like two nipples that pop out that my surge protector, you see the back of that? I could actually have that rested on those two things. And this will actually not be sitting in the front, but more so all the way in the back. So my surge protector will actually be sitting in the back of the rack. Let me see if I can show you guys. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it'll be sitting all the way in the back of the rack, thus still leaving more room that I could put other panels and stuff and having room to install plugs. Now, I do like this one that I saw because the, the plugs actually face downward. So if I do have like those um, five volt um, connectors for the routers and switch that are like the longer bricks, I could actually at least sit it downward. So before I jump into designing this, uh, a word from my sponsor. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mask yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you wanna be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime, I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using the desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs if i don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my isp to know what i'm doing i wouldn't want them to know either so they have no logs whatsoever it also allows for p2p and if you guys don't know what that is don't worry about it my main usage scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so i could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the states but yeah you could do that with this as well and best of all if you're using the link down in the description below you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money back guarantee, you also get three free months. So really you have nothing to lose. Another thing before we jump into designing everything, I did also hear your suggestion about Keystone and I don't know why I didn't just buy a Keystone because I do everything with Keystones. And I also got a couple of good ideas coming for that Keystone as well. So I did order one, that's gonna be coming in. And once I get that all set up, I'm gonna be showing you guys. Another thing that I did get from the company is the fan. Remember I was missing this from the last video, they finally shipped it over. Uh, this is actually pretty hefty and it's pretty loud. So I doubt I'm actually gonna be using it and installing on the top. I will be making my own fan controller and everything to keep temperatures low and using a 120 millimeter fan, maybe something with an Octua so it's quiet. And I'll be using some sort of like maybe a Pico to control everything and monitor the temperatures and such. But for this, I might have another project for this because this thing's pretty strong. So I'll come up with something for this. Let's begin designing. I am actually gonna be using FreeCAD. And if you guys seen my previous videos, I'm actually just recently learning FreeCAD and I followed the tutorials from this YouTube channel called uh, The Hardware Guy. He does amazing tutorials on more explaining why you're doing certain things versus how to do certain things. It's more like 
giving you the full knowledge of like doing it this way is better because of blah 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 so i would highly recommend his channel if you are planning to learn free cad now uh, i'm going to be pulling up the design that i have which is the empty front panel that i designed which you see is this guy right over here and we're going to be uh, basically navigating and modifying this part itself so i'm going to be jumping points uh, back and forth because there might be some quiet parts that you guys don't need to hear so I'm gonna just do that instead all right so I pretty much got the sketch down to what I want it to be uh, it's not that pretty like I said I'm still pretty new to de designing this but uh, what I do want to do is fillet the edges a little bit just so it has a little bit more of a base to go off on uh, so it doesn't snap as easy and when I print this it will actually be at hundred percent infill just in case So I got these two edges going in this has to be flat uh, that I could actually Put some fillet on there as well. So let me uh, Click on that click on that one and we'll fillet that too and From the underside we should definitely fillet that can I even select that? There you go. Select this. Whoops. Fillet that edge. Can I fillet this? And do the top as well. Okay. Actually, I like how that looks. So let's do this side as well. All right, that is it. So after I install all the screws onto the panel itself, I should still be able to rest this comfortably on top of the screws and into this. And it has a little bit of a base, so it has a little bit of a tolerance to sit on. And that is it. I think I'm gonna send this over to my 3D printer and get this printed out. Like I said, it's gonna be 100% infill and it should work according to the measurements. I might be off by maybe 0.1 of a millimeter here or there, but I should have enough uh, tolerance, like I said, to kind of fit this in. So we'll see how this turns out. Power delivery unit, and we'll also export this. I should be able to just pop this on into the base and uh, it should be able to print, it should fit. So let's... um. Put this onto our Neptune, drop this in here, and we're gonna have to rotate this. All right, there we have it, guys. Uh, rotated it to a point where I could actually print it onto my uh, Neptune 2. Slice this up, let's see how long it's gonna take. Oh, 100% infill. So two hours and 44 minutes. Uh, infill is gonna be 100%. Shouldn't be that much longer because it's not a lot of things. So three hours and five minutes, so I added like 15, 20 minutes to it. And I'm gonna send it over to a printer and hopefully everything gets done properly without any warpage or anything. So save to file, send this right over to my OctoPrint and I'll get this all ready. And I am gonna do a time lapse with OctoLapse so you guys should be able to see everything. Like right now it's dark, but I'll turn on the lights and get everything working. So the time lapse is not gonna take a long time, but if you can see the mistake I already made, um, it's pretty obvious after it prints out. So here it is. This is the printed material. And as you can see, I got the little prongs there. It actually printed out pretty nice and it's very, very sturdy. I was able to actually hold everything I need together. And there we go. But here's the problem. This is the adapter you can see, all right? And if you take a look at where the holes are, it doesn't line up because I have the two holes on the wrong side. It should be on the opposite side. So now when I do install it, it will actually be like this instead. And that is fine actually, because I just did a quick test with this. And it's a happy coincidence that it actually works out better this way because I didn't account for the cable that actually protrudes and you can't really like bend this part of the cable. And this kind of just worked out in my favor, having it on the wrong side. Um, it does fit, it doesn't bang into anything. It's not hitting like the side of the wall or anything, even though it does stick out a little bit, which I could show you right here. It does stick out uh, quite some bit, but it doesn't have any problems. And you can see, oops. And if you can see, it actually lines up with the top perfectly fine. 
it has a little um, extension over here but it allows me to actually bend the wire that I need to so all in all it kind of worked out like I said in my favor uh, the height of this was also perfect the gap for the screw to fit in so that worked out very well as you know well I measured it so if I was to pop this in and as you can see it will have actually something to rest on so it's actually not relying only on the plastic tabs that we have here it will be pushed against the screws this way making it more solid if I was to push something against it all it is now is to install it into the rack all the way to the back and see how everything looks and works out I just have everything pointed to the server itself I should probably remove these kind of things Put that in There we have all those screws in. I'm going to just install these. And there we go. We just installed the plate. And now it's time to run the cable. So what I could do is open up the side panel over here. And there we go, guys. It's basically installed. And it sits there pretty nice. I actually had to move one slot up because it was actually banging into a screw that's over here, which now avoids it if I was to put it only one slot up. But yeah, now I got my own little uh, PDU over here. And I got my cable ran all the way to the top up on over here. And I could run this wherever I want now. And that is it for the power delivery unit. Now I will be installing the Keystone on the next video and running some cables. And I know you guys were asking the depth of um, where the cables were or actually where the patch panel was to the glass and it's about two inches in distance. So no, you can't really run too long of a cable. And I do have other options. I am planning to put something on the bottom. Also a fan controller on the top. That's why I'm still leaving this gap up here. But yes, that will all be coming soon after this is done. And I would like to hear your ideas on what I should put on the bottom. Like I said, you, you guys were saying maybe a NAS or something like that. Um, again, I'm just tossing ideas out there. If you guys have anything interesting you want me to try, to shove down there let me know in the comments down below anyway if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and i'll see you guys next time